ಶರಿಣ ಶೃಣ್ವನ್ ರಾಮ ಕಥಾನಾದಿ ಪರಂ ಗತಿ ವೇದವೇದೇ ಪರೇ ಪುಂಸಿ ಜಾತಿ ದಶರಥಾತ್ಮಜೆ ವೇದ ಪ್ರಚೇತ ಸದಾಸಿ ಸಾಕ್ಷಾತ್ ರಾಮಾಯಣಾತ್ಮನ ಅಂಜನಾನಂದನ ವೀರಂ ಜಾನಕೀ ಶೋಕನಾಶನ ಕಪೀಶಂ ಅಕ್ಷಹಂತರ ವಂದೇ ಲಂಕಾ ಭಯಂಕರ ಮನೋಜವ ಮಾರುತುಲ್ಯ ವೇಗಂ ಜಿತೇಂದ್ರಿಯ ಬುದ್ಧಿಮತ ವರಿಷ್ಠ ವಾತಾತ್ಮಜ ವಾನರಯೂಥ ಮುಖ್ಯಂ ಶ್ರೀರಾಮದೂತ ಶಿರಸ ನಮಿ ಆಂಜನೇಯ ಮದಿ ಪಾಠಲಾನ ಕಾಂಚನಾದ್ರಿ ಕಮನೀಯ ವಿಗ್ರಹ ಪಾರಿಜಾತರುಮೂಲವಾಸಿ ಭಾವಯಾಮಿ ಪವಮಾನನಂದನ ಯತ್ರ ಯತ್ರ ರಘುನಾಥ ಕೀರ್ತನ ತತ್ರ ತತ್ರ ಕೃತಮಸ್ತಕಾಂಜಲಿ ಬಾಷ್ಪವಾರಿ ಪರಿಪೂರ್ಣಲೋಚನ ಮಾರುತಿ ನಮತ ರಾಕ್ಷಸಾಂತಕ ನಮಸ್ಕಾರ ಟು ದಿ ಆಗಸ್ಟ್ ಗ್ಯಾದರಿಂಗ್ ಆಸ್ ಸೆಟ್ ದಿ ಕಮೆನ್ಸ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಬೀನ್ ಓವರ್ ಫೋರ್ ಇಯರ್ಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ಮೀ ಟು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಟ್ರಾವೆಲ್ ಟು ದ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಅಫ್ಕೋರ್ಸ್ ದ ವಿಸಾ ಪ್ರೋಸೆಸ್ ವಾಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಈಸಿ ವಿತ್ ದಿ ಎಫರ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಟೇಕನ್ ಬೈ ದಿ ಮ್ಯಾನೇಜ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಕಮಿಟಿ ಹಿಯರ್ ದ ವಾಲಂಟಿಯರ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ವಿತ್ ದಿ ವಿಶಸ್ ಆಫ್ Astika such as you all it has been possible to be a part of this beautiful utsavam that celebrates shri rama samrajya pattabhishek utsavam so beginning today which is a saturday the 6th of august till the sunday the next the following sunday uh, august 14th for a stretch of 9 days i will be speaking on various topics in a certain order that has been sanctioned for a shrimad ramayana navaham today and tomorrow the lecture is between 3 and 5 pm monday to friday it is between 7 and 9 pm i'm sure there'll be people in the vicinity there'll be people who are coming from far off places uh it is very cruel and ruthless on my part to say you have to come every day but i'm still going to be ruthless please do come every day and uh, you know it is a fortune for me to be a part of navaham and it is a bhagyam for you also to be a part of navaham so please do manage your activities in such a way that you will be able to attend the lecture during the weekdays as well in a traditional shrimad ramayana navaham the language which is used traditionally will be one of the indian regional languages be tamil telugu kannada hindi marathi malayalam and so on but with the advent of technology that is bringing us far and wide i am coaxed to use a mlecha bhasha here for 9 days but there is a saying bhasha geeti prashasta bhagavati vachanat rajavat chopacharat so if you have to praise the king it doesn't matter in which language you praise him the content overtakes the language so there are certain situations that i may be forced to digress into tamil which is my mother tongue intermittently maybe one uh, 1% of the entire lot will be in tamil of course i am very very happy to bring in references from the other regional languages as well those of you who feel that having listened to stalwarts such as anantarama dikshita uh, balakrishna shastri sundar kumar krishna premi and all of these people who have rendered and done a marvelous job may find a small disadvantage when it comes to english because everything that is conveyed in your mother tongue in your regional language cannot be translated into english nevertheless i will try my level best to get as close and following the footsteps of renna acharya and martin acharya 
as much as they have bestowed upon us and we have bequeathed from them. So the day one, the topic cited for today is Sri Rama Jananam. To understand Sri, Madrama, Sri Rama Jananam, we must understand what place is accorded to Sri Ramayanam in Sanatana Dharma. Why is it first of all called Sanatana Dharma? Yecha Veda Vido Vipraha Yecha Adhyatma Chetasaha Tevadanti Mahatmanam Krishnam Dharmam Sanatanam. This is a shlokam from Sri Mahabharatam, which says Yecha Veda Vido Vipraha. Those of them who are adept in the Purva Kandam of Vedam, which is called as Karma Kandam, and those who are adept in the Uttara Kandam, which is Jnana Kandam, the Upanishads, Yecha Adhyatma Chetasaha, Te Vadanti, they together from the Purva Kandam and the Uttara Kandam, the Mimamsakas have come together. Krishnam Dharmam Sanatanam. Whatever Krishna has said is Sanatana Dharma. So we are introduced to the word Sanatana Dharma in Mahabharata. Of course, Manu Dharma Shastram says Satyam Bruyat, Priyam Bruyat, Na Bruyat, Satyam Apriyam, Priyam Chana Anrutam Bruyat, Yeshaha Dharmaha Sanatanaha. So Manu Dharma Shastram also has a reference to the word Sanatana Dharma. Sanatana means that which is eternal for which we cannot trace an immediate start date. So that is called Sanatana. Dharma is the intrinsic feature of any object that we see. To burn is the dharma of fire. To cool is the dharma of water. To forgive is the dharma of the Lord. So dharma is the intrinsic feature. Sanatana dharma is that continuing eternal feature. In Sanatana dharma, we have many, many books, scriptures that can guide us. I often quote this example of Swami Sri Dayananda Saraswati who used to stay. If you go ask a devout Christian what is his or her holy book, they would proudly say the Holy Bible. So will a Muslim, a devout Muslim say the Holy Quran is his or her book. A Sikh would often state the Guru Granth Sahib. What will a Hindu say? A Hindu would say, Swamiji used to remark, welcome to my library. Because we are, we have bequeathed the entire library in Sanatana Dharma, so there is no one book which is the holy book. Of course, today people do say that Bhagavad Gita should be accorded that status. Nevertheless, every scripture in Sanatana Dharma is equally important. But, while classifying our Granthas, there are certain scriptures which are extremely important which is called as Mukhya Pramanam. Mukhya Pramanam so much so that every letter which is being used in that particular scripture is extremely holy. One such Mukhya Pramanam is Srimad Ramayanam. I will give you an example as to why the Mangala Shlokam, the Purva Shlokam states Kujantam Ramaramedi Madhuram Madhuraksharam The invocatory verse states that in Ramayanam Madhura Aksharam Every letter is very important. Why is the letter important? What is so important in Srimad Ramayanam? For this my Acharya used to give an example of um, an incident that happened during Rama and Sita's visit to Chitrakuta. Chitrakuta is a small place by the banks of river Mandakini in the upper part of Madhya Pradesh bordering Uttar Pradesh. So there is one incident which is said to have occurred during Rama's stay in the forest which should have been in Ayodhya Kandam but beautifully Valmiki positions that as if Hanuman is narrating it, Sita is narrating it to Hanuman in Sundara Kanta. It is called Kaka Sura Vrittantam. Rama was um, in the forest in Chitrakuta and they had one person who was serving them all the 14 years, 365 days, 24 cross 7, that was Lakshmana. 
Sumitra son Lakshmana was called Saumitri and he served the divine couple to his best of capabilities. One day after having a sumptuous lunch, Rama was putting his head on the lap of Sita and was resting for some time. A few minutes later, he, he could experience a mild tremor, 6.5 on the Richter scale. So he just looked up. Why is this problem? He saw that Sita's body was shivering. She was suffering. She was withering in pain. That is when he looked and then he saw the thin cloth that covered her chest was drenched in blood. She was hence suffering from that pain. And the blood was still oozing from her soft, tender skin. He looked atop and he saw a crow seated on the branch of a tree. He immediately took a blade of grass and recited the Brahmastra Mantram and released that particular blade of grass. In Dhanur Vidya, there is a provision when you can't find the approved weapons around you, you can recite mantras and make any object into an astra. That is called Aishikam. That provision is called Aishikam. Since Rama had mastered this art of using any object, you may be wondering, is it possible to use any object, turn any object into an astra when you can't find a bow and the quiver of arrows around you? I used to have this doubt until I saw some visuals of the Indian parliament. <laughs> any object can turn into an astra. So here, the blade of grass was taken and that was to be released. And Rama released. In Tamil, those of you who can understand Tamil, there is an age-old saying, Vallavanukku pullum ayudam For the one who is adept, even a blade of grass can become a weapon. So he released that particular Brahmastra and that started chasing the crow. Padma Puranam states, Trin lokan samparikramya tameva sharanam gadaha. This particular crow went and knocked at the door of his own father, Indra. Indra refused to entertain because it was this crow which had harmed Sita. So he thought he will find some asylum in his own father. His father was no different. So he thought, his father will support him in this moment, but Indra was more concerned about his position and power and he did not want anything to happen to his position. So he had to relinquish the responsibility of protecting his son to his own. So this boy went knocking the door of every possible deity. Trin lokan samparikramya tameva sharanam gataha. It went and came back to the same place where it started. Vedanta Deshika, the polymath of the 13th century, states, Patti mudalam avatil padiyanak kudamal yetti shayum uranodi ilaitu vilum kagam pol. Ilaitu, that which got fatigued. Vilum kagam, the one that sought asylum, that particular crew. Well, this is something that you must have heard. Who is this crow? No, don't tell me it's an Indian crow. That is understandable. <laughs> tell me who is this crow? <laughs> You're wearing your masks, I'm aware, but you can still talk. <laughs> ah. Indra's son. Indra's son. Who is Indra's son? Jayanta. Who is Indra's son? Jayanta. Jayanta. Very good. So Indra's son is Jayanta. Correct. So the scroll is Jayanta. Now, I will tell you how important Srimad Ramayana is. 
in Srimad Ramayanam, Valmiki says, this is the son of Indra, the crow. He doesn't say this is Jayanta. Why do we state it is Jayanta? Because we have heard elsewhere that Jayanta was the son of Indra. So here it is mentioned the crow was the son of Indra. We have heard elsewhere that Jayanta is the son of Indra. So Jayanta must be the crow is our conclusion. First of all our assumption that Indra was a part of the family planning program is wrong. Why should he stop only with one child? He could have had many children. One. Second, Ramayanam doesn't mention that this crow was Jayanta. So Vedanta Deshika in his commentary to Stotra Ratnam, which is called Stotra Ratnam Bhashyam, he says, Na ayam api Jayanta. This is not Jayanta. Why? Because Valmiki's Ramayanam doesn't mention it is Jayanta. So Ramayanam is so important. So much so that even if a, another Purana states that this is Jayanta, we should not concur that this is Jayanta, this is only a crow. This is called Mukhya Pramanam. Well, another example. When uh, Ravana comes in the form of a Sanyasi, a Parivrajaka and wants to abduct Sita. We must have heard that Sita went inside the hermitage. She came with a bowl of fruits to offer to the sannyasi. That is when he reveals his original form and abducts Sita, holding her thighs in one of his hands and the braid of hair that she had in the other. This is how Valmiki describes. This is how we understand and then she goes back to, she goes to, she's taken to Lanka, Rama goes there, fights and after the war is all done, he brings her back. There are certain versions that talk about a Maya Sita. I hope you must have heard of these versions because the other versions of Ramayana are more popular than the Ramayana version itself. <laughs> so you must have heard that when Sita went inside the hermitage, a Maya Sita appeared and Agni Bhagavan consumed the original Sita gave this replica of Sita, the Maya Sita and she was the one who was kidnapped and later when Rama asked her to go undergo the uh, Agni Pariksha, the, uh, sorry to use the word, the Sita replica, dummy Sita went into the fire and the original Sita came out. You must have heard of this version. This is not there in original Ramayana. So, Acharya state, whatever is mentioned in Ramayanam is Mukhya Pramanam. So, Ramayanam has been accorded that status. So, what you are going to listen from day 1 till day 9 is one of the most authentic, respected, never doubted scripture called as Srimad Ramayanam. Now, we often have two categories of scriptures. One is Itihasa and the other one is Purana. Itihasam is two in number, which is Srimad Ramayanam and Sri Mahabharatam. Puranas are 18 in number. Now they have become 108 or 118, I don't know. But primarily 18 in number. What is the difference? Itihasa, iti Itihasam. As it happened, it has been reported. That is Itihasam. Puranam is Pura Api Navam Puranam, that which has happened before, but has been presented to us in a very contemporary fashion. So, for example, if there is an incident which is happening, the person who writes, reports it, reports it from the ground. So, direct report, that is Ramayanam and Mahabharatam. Whereas, if an incident has happened, person A who has seen it tells this or narrates this to person B. Person B narrates this to person C. C narrates it to D. D narrates it to E. F will ask E, please narrate what all happened then. Then this person E will tell what he has heard from D, who has heard from C, who has heard from B, who has heard from A. This is Purana. That is why, let us take Srimad Bhagavata Mahapurana, one of the most popular Puranas in the 18 Puranas, which is called Srimad Bhagavata Mahapuranam. The seventh canto is called Saptamaskandam, where you get to understand Visumhavataram. 
But if a person is falling short of time, they will immediately start with Hiranyakashipu. There was a king called Hiranyakashipu. He had a son who was extremely devout to the Lord who was called Prahlada. This is how Nisimhavataram will begin. But in Bhagavatam, it doesn't begin that way. Abhimanyu's son, Parikshit, upon understanding that he was to die at the hands of a poisonous snake called Takshaka, sits on the banks of a holy river. That is when a boy of tender limbs, lotus-like feet of 16 years of age, called Shuka, the son of Vedavyasa, comes and starts narrating the pastimes of the Lord. This is how it begins. So Parikshit questions Shuka and Shuka gives his answers. Now the question asked by Parikshit is Samaf Priya Suhrit Brahman Lokanam Abhayankaraha It is said, O oh dear Muni, that the Lord is impartial. He doesn't treat one is superior to the other. In that case, if the Lord is impartial, why should he be showering love on Prahlada and on the other side ripping open Hiranyakashipu? If he was impartial, he should be able to correct both of them. Why is he showering love on one and why is he showing his anger on the other? Was his question. What should Shuka reply? I will tell you what happened in the Sumhavatana. He doesn't state. You know what he states? The same question that you had asked was asked by Yudhishthira, your ancestor, while he performed Rajasuya Yajyam and Krishna cut his head, Sishupala's head. So the same question that you had asked, even your ancestor had asked Narada Maharishi. I don't know how many of you can associate this incident with Woodward's grape water. <laughs> if a child cries, they will not give Woodward's grape water. They will immediately say, when your mother used to be a child, she also used to cry. Then that mother's mother will come. Beauty is everyone in that house has managed to survive. That's the, the moral of that advertisement. Nevertheless, so here he will say that Narada answered this question because the same question was asked by somebody else. So this is how Puranam goes. So the advantage of Puranam is it has been authenticated by so many people. The disadvantage is because it has been narration 1, narration 2, narration 3, there are chances of aberrations and later inclusions which an Itihasa will not have. Because it's a direct report. So, Itihasam is two in number, which is Sri Madhramayana and Sri Mahabharata. Amongst these two, you have degrees of comparison in English, right? When there is only one, it is positive. When there is more than one, which is two in number, it becomes comparative. More than two, it becomes superlative. So, when there are two books, the question will be, which of these two is better? Not as if we are going to read any of them after listening to the answer. But we would still love to compare, right? So here the question is, amongst these two, which is more authentic? Shirairendavalin yetratta srimad ramayanathin perumai sholitru. So itihasa sreshtamana srimad ramayanathal. Amongst these two, amongst Ramayana and Mahabharatam, Ramayana is accorded the better position. So we have to witness the beauty of Srimad Ramayana in the days to come. Now, the moment I say, Valmiki has written as he saw. So when did he start writing? You have to tell me something. See, that there is a huge difference between having a music concert and a discourse. Music concert the Vidwan or the Vidushi is so much into that Nadam that they will close their eyes and they will have a good rapport with the violinist, the Mridangam. So they will be in their own world and intermittently you will have to give them an applause. Right? So the moment the Naravil is done and the last core by the Tirmaram is done, you can give an applause. This is how music concerts work. I'm very sorry your discourse doesn't work that way. I'll keep asking you questions because the lunch hour is just over. So, I, I want my audience to be awake. So, I'll keep asking this question. When did he start writing Ramayanam? Uttarakandam. Excellent. He wrote, when is a big question, right? Now, let us trace the chronology of Ramayanam. Rama was born 
at the age of 12, Rama was married to Sita, who was at the age of 6. When? Then for another period set of 12 years, Rama and Sita managed to live happily in Ayodhya. So Rama was 24, Sita was 18. Rama was to enter his 25th year, just about to enter. That is when the entire fiasco of asking him to go to the forest happened. So he was sent on an exile for 14 years then. So at the beginning of 25th year, he went into the forest. And the moment he returned from Lanka, after coronating Vibhishana as the next king with Sita and Hanuman, he was now beginning his 39th year. Sita was 32 and 33, between 32 and 33. Then after Pattabhishekam, they lived happily for two years happily in Ayodhya. So Rama was 41, Sita was 35. That is when she was pregnant. This is how Uttarakandam begins. And at that point in time, probably in her first trimester, that is when Sita happens to tell her husband, when he asks, what will make you happy in this gestation? She tells that my children should grow up in a very, very humble environment, bereft of comforts, like how we were living happily in the forest for the first 13 years. It was at that point in time, one of the spies to the kingdom, called as Bhadra, comes and informs Rama about what he heard from different sections of the people. And that is when Rama, in order to cleanse himself of any, any kind of blot that may fall on his kingdom, he says, okay, let me take this hard decision of sending the pregnant wife of mine to the forest. He calls his dear brother Lakshmana and asks him to drop Sita into the woods very close to the flowing waters of river Tamasa by Valmiki's ashrama. Though uh, Lakshmana was initially reluctant, he says, okay, let me follow the orders of my brother and leaves Sita on the banks of river Tamasa. Now Sita initially did not know, she thought she has come to the forest Rama has sent so that she could stay in the resort for a week or so and come back. Then later she realizes that he, he has banished her from the kingdom. She immediately tells Lakshmana, go and ask your brother if he keeps telling with all pride that he has been a recipient of Vasishtha's knowledge. I have graduated from Vasishtha's university, similar to the Ivy League here. So I have graduated from Vasishta's university. Go ask your brother if to banish one's wife who's pregnant into the forest is what Vasishta has taught him. Go and ask him that. As soon as he leaves, Sita, there is a beautiful uh, composition of a great freedom fighter poet called a Subramanya Bharati. Dik teri yad gatil unnai teddi teddi ilai te ne dik teri yad gatil She was in a similar state. She was clueless as to which direction she should go. That is when she saw a hermitage on the other side. And that hermitage was that of a great rishi whom she had visited along with her husband in their sojourn in their forest. His name was Valmiki. He was one of the rarest rishis in those days, who was a decoit turned rishi. So she went into the hermitage. Valmiki was able to recognize Sita. His Kankarya Paras were not able to recognize. The moment she entered this hermitage, Valmiki welcomed her with open arms and understood what had transpired between her and Rama. And he said, do not worry Sita, till you are here, don't worry, I am like your brother, a fatherly figure, I will take care of all your needs. Why? Because earlier he was a decoit who was of this habit of keeping the passers-by in the forest and he used to uh, take all their possessions and he used to fend his family. That is when one day Narada Maharishi's beautiful golden veena was caught. It was called Mahati. 
And Narada said, see you are accruing a lot of sins by taking away the possessions of others. And you will accrue a lot of sins. Who is going to share those sins from you? He said, no, no, my family will take partake those sins. Go ask your family. The family member said, we will take share in the gold. Why will we take share in the papa? That is when this decoit was enlightened and he came back to Narada. And Narada is said to have told him, what do you see in front of you? I see a beautiful tree, a vriksham, a padapa, which is also called a mara. Padapa, a tree is called padapa because padena vivadi idi padapa. The one that drinks through its roots is called padapa, vriksham and so on. I see a beautiful tree in front of me. Well, it is called Mara. Keep repeating the same name while you are meditating on the Supreme. And he started repeating Mara, 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 Mara. And he had this Ramanamam that he was repeating. And as he was meditating, like a log of wood, a piece of wood, unmoved, termites started building a hill upon him. The ant hill which was built upon him was called Valmikam. That is when Narada Maharishi uh, uh, Brahma appears and sprinkles some waters of Varuna Deva on him. And then the ant hill crumbles and breaks and then arises a person with great resplendence. Since he arose from Valmikam, from that day, that moment onwards he was called Valmiki. In Taitriyam, which is a part of Yajurveda, you may be wondering, he has been giving so many bits and pieces of information, how do we stitch it together? Leave that job to me, I'll stitch. So, in Yajurveda, in Krishna Yajurveda, in Taitriyam, there is a passage which states, Shrutoho Janma, this particular Valmikam, the ant hill, Vedam states, are the years of Mother Earth. So, if, if Mother Earth has to hear, if she wishes to understand what's happening atop her, over her, she hears them through the ant hills. So it is called Valmikam. Since he arose from Valmikam, he is called Valmiki. Since he arose from Mother Earth, he is regarded as Mother Earth's son. Valmiki is treated like the son of Mother Earth. Similarly, a great king of the Nepal region. Nepal region was largely called as Mithila Desham. Videha Desham with its capital as Mithila Nagari. So this king called Siradhvaja, he performed a Putrakameshti Yajnam. At the end of which, the farmers requested that why don't you plow the land, till the land and prove how much of love you have for farmers like us. And as he started plowing, his, 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 the tip of that plow is called as Tasi in Sanskritam. So the Tasi was caught, in, caught to a small casket. And as the king went closer to the casket, he saw a live little young girl, baby, in the casket. Nobody was claiming that girl at all. So the farmer said, she must be orphaned by her own children. Why don't you take this child up? as the very gift of God and why don't you nurture her? This child which was taken by Siradhvaja was called Sita because she arose from the tip of the plow which is called Tasi. So when the noun comes from a verb, you'll have to reverse that word. So Tasi becomes Sita. So she was called Sita. Since she was found on Mother Earth, she is regarded as the daughter of Mother Earth. Regarded. Many, many Kritis sing praise of Sita as the daughter of Mother Earth. Bhoomi janayakam bhukti mukti dayakam namakitana darakam naravaragatamagikam ramachandram bhavayami raghukula tilakam Bhumi ja, Bhumi ja, the daughter of Mother Earth. Ravi Shashi Kuja Buddha Guru Shukrasha Nishchara Rahu Ketu Netaram Raja Kumaram Ramam 
पवन जप्त अवनी जा मनोहर भज रे रे मनस अवनी जा मनोहर अवनी मीन्स भूमि जा मीन्स डॉटर अवनी जा मनोहर द वन हु बिलवेड ऑफ सीता हु डॉटर ऑफ मदर अर्थ क्षितिजरमण चिंत श्रीराम भवण क्षिति क्षिति मीन्स भूमि जा मीन्स डॉटर सीता इज कॉल्ड क्षिति जा भूमि जा अवनी जा सो शी इज ट्रीटेड एज द डॉटर ऑफ मदर अर्थ वाल्मीकि इज द ट्रीटेड एज द सन ऑफ मदर अर्थ Rama asked Lakshmana to drop Sita by the banks of river Tamasa, closer to the ashram of Valmiki, because she is pregnant. For her delivery, she may wish to go to the house of her father or brother. So she was sent there. Now, the moment Sita entered the ashram, we will all be wondering: the people who were serving Valmiki in the ashram would have taken selfies with Sita. she sita rama patni we take selfie nobody had any general knowledge then they didn't know that this was rama patni they thought she must be some princess some queen they were people who were serving valmiki selflessly so it didn't matter to them if she was an aristocrat a kshatriya kula and nothing of that when valmiki said attend to her needs they thought our guru vakyam is more important and started attending to her needs she did not reveal her name she called her name some maithili janaki many women are called maithili and janaki even from crazy mohan's drama they are called maithili and janaki so they started attending to her she was given a separate room a suite and valmiki started thinking all the while now she sita is at the age of 35 so valmiki must have lived over that over those many years so he was thinking all this while that in this present world if there is one person who was a repository of all auspicious attributes it is rama but now this moment he thought that notion has to change because a person whom i thought is a prefect will not end up sending his forest a uh, wife to the forest while she is pregnant even without understanding what must have gone right or wrong so he was extremely doubtful this can not be rama i thought rama is mr perfect this cannot be the situation while he was doubtful as to why this had happened that is when rama edam begins he was doubting if this rama is the one who is a repository of all these 16 as auspicious attributes that is when the first shlokam of ramayana commences see you will have to connect the first shlokam of balakandam with uttarakandam and see where it has to begin tapasvadhyaya niratam tapasvivadvidam varam naradam paripapracha वाल्मीकि these are all in the dvitiya vibhakti so this has to indicate one person then there is one word which is not in dvitiya vibhakti which is tapasvi that has to indicate the other person so tapasvi who is valmiki to his hermitage came narada maharishi on his own who is narada maharishi tapasvadhyaya niratam the one who is adept in tapas what is tapaha tapaha aalochane dhatu the one who can internalize and realize and think contemplate is called tapa so generally these days if you see some elderly person a person who is extremely well read the parents will immediately tell their children take his blessings go fall at his feet see 
Of course, age doesn't matter in Sanatana Dharma. Prahlada can teach much more than what many Maharishis could teach. But today in Kali Yugam, remember that age or education alone cannot help one's blessings fructify. For example, if somebody falls at my feet, I say you have to best wishes. Oh, whatever exams you are pursuing, may you pass successfully. They won't pass. <laughs> I'll tell you why. Because we do not have the tapas in us. See, only if you contemplate and internalize, you know, the great sage of Kanchi, Paramacharya, Chandrasekharendra Saraswati, who was called Mahapriva, who lived in the last hundred years. Maybe a Vedanta Deshika, maybe a Bhagavad Rama Anuja. Those of them who gave so much of their life for tapas, only then will every word that you utter become a reality. Just by age. That is because you were produced 50 years before. So your age cannot determine your words turning into reality. It may be, it may turn the contrary also. So there are chances. So tapas is very, very important. In Srimad Bhagavatam, Brahma, who has been created, wonders what he should be doing then. That is when there is a shlokam in Srimad Bhagavatam which states, Shodashoksharaha. So the 16th letter and the 21st letter have to be combined, is the answer. So the 16th letter is ta, the 21st is pa. So tapa, tapaha alochane dhatu, Brahma starts performing tapas. Now that word tapas is accorded to Brahma's son, who is Narada. Tapas swadhyaya niratam, swadhyaya. Practice, internalize what you are studying. Tapas swadhyaya niratam, the one who was a storehouse of tapas and swadhyayam. Tapasvi vag vidam varam vag vidam varam. The one who is adept in eloquence. You should know how to manage that situation. You should end up turning even a negative scenario into a very very positive one. That is the role of a speaker. Imagine the entire lecture was held outside. And we are having thunderstorms and it starts pouring. Oh, you know Mara Payar, they know. Varuna Bhagavan is blessing us. <laughs> this is how we should transform even a negative like event into a positive event. When you visit some house, imagine the food that they serve is not very tasty. Just giving you a scenario. In that case, you should never say your food is bad. You should say the water that you gave is extremely tasty. <laughs> Where do you get this water from Mississippi or Missouri? So, this is how you should turn a negative event into a positive event. You know, at the end of my lecture, people will ask. I will expect things like, okay, the lecture was good. Kurta <laughs> At least the lecture was not good. So, they are trying to... Vagvidam varam naradam paripaprachya naram dadati iti naradaha The one who bestows knowledge on the... To the person who is interested in understanding is called Narada. Varana Radha Narayana Smarana Nanda Nubhava Mughala Varana Radha Say Saint Yagaraja. Naradam Paripapracha. Paripapracha means ask questions only if you have had the patience to understanding the situation before. It's very important. See, in this current world, there are a handful, I can't even say if there are a handful, there is only probably one civilization that openly says questioning is okay. If in Sanatana Dharma, the art of questioning was not motivated, was not encouraged, we wouldn't be having so many scriptures at all. If Maitreya had not questioned and if Parashara Maharishi had not answered, we wouldn't be enjoying the compilation which is called Vishnu Puranam today. If 
Parikshit had not asked questions and Shukam Brahm had not given answers, we wouldn't be enjoying Srimad Bhagavatam. If Vaishampayana had not answered and Janamejaya not questioned, we wouldn't be having Mahabharatam. If Arjuna had not questioned and Krishna had not given answers, we wouldn't be having Bhagavad Gita. We, if we have Thiruvai Muri, which is called Dravida Vedam today, it is because Madhura Kaviyalvar asked, Settatting by Chil, Siriya de Verandal, yet they thinni, Yenge Kedakum, for which Namalvar answered, Ada Attai thinna, Amge Kedakum. So, Sanatana Dharma, Vedic civilization, has just not encouraged the art of questioning, but it has also proven that only through questioning can you seek answers. Nevertheless, in Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, Krishna, you know, was related to Arjuna. Krishna and Arjuna were related. How Arjuna's mother, Kunti, and Krishna's father, Vasudeva, were siblings. So, for Krishna, Arjuna was Attai's son, aunt's son. And that is why Krishna's sister was married to Arjuna. They were related of the same age, roughly. So, in the middle of the battlefield, when he asks questions, you would be expecting the teacher who is answering questions to be at a higher pedestal. No. One of the great saints of the last century, he was referred to as Thirukkudandai Andavan. He was a great saint and he had a witty form of rendering discourses. He used to state, that Arjuna's footwear used to be scratching the shoulders of Krishna. So, there is no respect, there is disrespect. So, he keeps on asking questions to which Krishna keeps answering. But in the middle, Krishna tells, Hey Arjuna, you are extremely talented in putting the right questions to me. But trust me, if you want to an seek answers to questions henceforth, go to the right Acharya, serve him. Serve him selflessly, relentlessly, so much so that one day, extremely happy with the services that you have rendered, the teacher will ask, if you have any questions, please do ask. And at that point in time, with absolute humility, ask questions and you will get that answer. So, Krishna says, questioning is not wrong. But don't ask questioning even without having any foundation of what that book you are going to ask questions from. And ask questions in such a way that you want those answers imprinted in your mind rather than testing the person whom you are questioning. <laughs> See, we ultimately want to prove that we are better intellectuals than Valmiki and Vyasa. This is a futile exercise. You know, so many people will come up to me and say, Sir, I have one thing which is niggling me, it is troubling me. What is troubling you? See, Valmiki has not mentioned, uh, mentioned much about uh, Lakshmana's wife, Urmila. If he has not mentioned, leave it. Why should we be bothered so much? See, ultimately they want to find a fault with Valmiki's Ramayana. Sir, you are talking about the sacrifices that Rama and Sita had. What about Urmila? How she would have survived without Lakshmana for 14 years? She was happy. <laughs> Let us not trouble such people. Why should we <laughs> dig what is already been buried and cremated? So, the point is, questioning is right. But initially have this art of acquiring knowledge. Because the moment you start acquiring knowledge, most of the questions that may arise will already be answered. And after that, you do swadhyayam, think and think and think. You will get answers. Despite that, if you don't get answers, ask questions. So, naradam paripa pracha. So, this paripa pracha means questioning after contemplating. Valmikir Muni Pungavam, the lion, the bull amongst all uh, Munis had arrived 
and Valmiki was to ask, what were the questions now? Narada says, Valmiki, if you have any doubts, please do ask. Immediately, there is one long question that he asks. The question goes like this. Konvasmin sam pratam loke gunavan kashchaviryavan dharmagnyas chakritagnyas cha satyavakyodrida prataha charitrena cha ko yuktaha sarva bhuteshu ko hitaha vidwan kakka samarthas cha kashchaika priyadarshanaha atmavan ko jitakrodaha dhyudimaan ko anasuyakaha Kasya Bibhyati Devascha Jata Roshasya Sanyuge Who is the one who has got all the 16 qualities in him? Why should Valmiki ask? Because till then he was thinking that Rama was the one who had all the 16 attributes. The moment he saw that Rama had vanquished his pregnant wife to Sita in the middle of the forest, he thought Rama must not be the repository of auspicious attributes. So he asks, Kon Basmin, Sampratam Loke Gunavan, Sampratam Loke, He Narada Maharshi, in the present world, Sampratam Loke, who has got these 16 attributes? Gunam, Gunam means attribute. What is the first gunam out of the 16 gunams? Gunavan. You are able to see a small problem here. Uh, in Tamil, there is a word to refer to the provision items. It's called Maligai Saman. Now the mother has to buy some provisions every month. So she asks her son to take down the list. So it is called Maligai Saman, provisions list. One, the boy puts one, two, three, four, one. He tells, mother, tell me what you want. One, maligai saman. No, no, you tell me what you want in that. No, no, maligai saman. So if I go to the shop and say, maligai saman, you tell me what you want. Maligai saman. Sixteen gunas. What is the first gunam? Gunaman. How is it possible? Then that gunam should have a different meaning. In Sanskritam, gunam means multiplication. Remember this. Chaturadika Shatam Ashta Gunam Dva Ayudascha Chaturadika Shatam Ashta Gunam Arya Bhatiyam tells this Chatur Adhika Shatam Chaturu 4 Adhika Shatam more than 100 104 Ashta Gunam multiply it with 8 832 Dva Shashti Ayudascha Dva Shashti 62 Ayudas 10,000 62,000 plus 832 which is 62,832 divided by Dwa Ayuta again. So you will have 20,000 which will give you 3.1416, the value of Pi. So the value of Pi in Arya Bhatiyam has this word Gunam which means multiplication. Gunam in Sanskritam also denotes that attribute in a person where despite being in a very high status, the person is able to move with people of all genre, all strata in the society with equal ease. It's called Saushilyam. So Saushilyam, the attribute in the Lord, especially in Ramavataram, is referred to by the word Guna. Konvasmin sampratam loke gunavan kascha viryavan. Who is the one who is adept with viram? Dharma Gnyascha, the one who is able to understand the dharma of Prabhati and Bhakti. Krita Gnyascha, Krita Gnya. Hindi, kuch log idha Hindi bolte hai? Haan ji. Krita Gnya ka matlab kya hota hai Hindi mein? Krita Gnya ante hai ni, chapandi. Very good. Grateful. Gratitude is called Krita Gnyata. So, Kritagnya means grateful. What is the word in Sanskritam for ungrateful? Kritagna. See, look at the word. Kritagnya is grateful. Kritagna is ungrateful. You will have to be very careful in listening or even uttering this word. So, the question is, who in the world is a Gunavan, Viryavan and Kritagnyavan? Grateful. What is the answer for all these questions? You know the answer. Who is the one who has got all these 16 as auspicious attributes? Rama. So how do we prove Rama is grateful? 
Tell me how is he grateful? How do we prove Rama is grateful? Give me one incident that he was grateful. He was grateful to Anuman for what? For gone, going and finding Sita and coming back. Yeah, and so what was the sign? What did he bless Hanuman with? Very good. Abara para abara parikha paribrata parapura parasada dava daha na java na bhava na bhava kavi vara parishvanga bhavita sarvasvadana. He embraced Hanuman. Very, very good. One incident. Ah, you have an incident. Jatayu moksham. Jatayu moksham. See, Jatayu, a scavenger, a vulture, tried protecting Sita, but he failed. And that is when Rama says, Gachalokan anuttaman. May you get moksham. So that was a sign of gratitude. Very good. I will give you one incident what my Acharya used to state. Same getting back to the Kaka Sura Vrittanta. So the crow, it had knowingly, not unknowingly, knowingly the crow with its sharp beaks attacked Sita, physically assaulted Sita and blood started oozing. Ravana did no such harm. He just kidnapped her. He took her to Lanka, which was, is in crisis. <laughs> so, the moment he took her to Lanka, every day he used to send her one silk sari with beautiful jewellery. Silk sari with, in, in Kanchipuram lingo, it's called rectai pet. With Hamsam border, you may be wondering, how do you know it is Hamsam border? Because Vedanta Deshika mentions Taddakulanka Murtau Tanmanjira in Hamsa Sandesham. While she was kidnapped, she had Hamsa border in her sari, it seems. So they are getting to the specifics in those days. I am sure for the kidnapped children, there will be one small pa uh, portion in the news accorded. Kana will lie. They have to tell what dress that the child was wearing while he was kidnapped. So here Vedanta Deshika states she was wearing a silk sari with hamsam border. It was korvai. Now, he used to present a silk sari to Sita and used to coax her to marry him. And Sita refused. But Ravana, despite being so respectful to Sita, he lost his life. Whereas the crow which had physically assaulted Sita just lost one eye, not its life. Why? Look at the incident. When the crow came, Rama released the astram and finally the crow surrendered at the feet of Rama and that too initially did not even bow its head down. It kept its foot on Rama's foot and that is when Sita pushes the crow back and puts its head down in such a way that Rama feels that the crow is seeking asylum at his feet. Then, in order to tell the world that if you commit a mistake, you need to be accorded a punishment, he takes one of its eyes. That is why in Sanskritam literature, it is ka called Kakakshi Golakanyayam, which means literature believes that crows have only one eye. They have two sockets, but only one eye. That is why the crow will never look at you like this will either turn this way or this way. So the moment it turns that side, the ice balls keep juggling between the two sockets. Is a belief in the literature. Now don't come and prove that it has got two eyes. I said this is a belief in the literature. Poets have been given the license to exaggerate things. So this crow was not killed. At that point in time, you know what Valmiki does? He says that the crow's life was spared. By whom? By Rama. So he says, Kakutsta vadharham api kakutsta kripaya paryapalayad. Vadharham api. That which had to be killed but was not killed was spared of its mistakes. By whom? By Rama. There the word used by Valmiki is vadharham api kakutsta. Thaha kripaya paryapalayad. Kakutstha did not kill it. Why should he use the word Kakutstha instead of Rama? Because in Rama's ancestors there was a king believed to be Mandhata. He was called by Indra to fight the demons because Indra could not single handedly tackle the demon. So the moment the king went, 
he started fighting the demons. One day, his the chariot upon which he was fighting had some breakdown problem and it had to go to the workshop. Without having the chariot, you cannot fight on a battlefield because you have to store your weapons somewhere. And you have to stand at a higher pedestal to fight the demon who is at that height. So when the chariot was not available, Indra transformed himself into a bull. And he said, Mandhada, why don't you stand atop me and fight the demon? So the bull, the tall bull has a huge hump. So the king stood atop the bull and atop its hump and fought the demon. And of course he was victorious and the demon was vanquished in the battle. Since this king stood on the top of the hump, a hump in Sanskritam is called kaku. Since he 